to get started, I just wanted to first welcome everyone and introduce myself. My name is David Silberman. I am the co-founder and CEO of Clinical Research Fast Track. And Clinical Research Fast Track is an organization which is working with individuals to help them enter the field of clinical research. And the interesting thing is it's very difficult to break into clinical research. This field is working on new medicines devices and it's hard to get in. But once you're in, there are so many opportunities. The graduates of our program are working all over the country and in in hospitals, they're working at research sites, they're working at CROs, and maybe you can explain later, uh, William, what a CRO is, pharmaceutical companies. So there's so many places to work in this field. And as I mentioned earlier, there's 84,000 open positions right now in clinical research. And in Texas, there's 5,600 open positions. So why don't we kick things off um, I'm so happy to introduce our star panelist, William Jones, who is a clinical research educator at the Children's Health System of Texas. And um, William is also an instructor at Clinical Research Fast Track. So when we're in Texas, uh, he comes over and he teaches our students, um, just like he teaches all of the clinical researchers in his hospital system. So without further ado, I just wanted to welcome you, William, and maybe you can briefly introduce yourself and tell us how did you get into clinical research and what, it, what is clinical research? Awesome, awesome, I'll be happy to. Thank you so much, David, for the opportunity. Um, I, I love it. Um, basically, as David said, my name is William Jones, and I got the opportunity to um, start in clinical research over 16 years ago, wow. Um, 16 years ago, right out of grad school. Um, basically, clinical research, for me, the way in which I landed, it was a voyage. I, at first, I thought I wanted to be a physician. I thought I wanted to, um, I wanted to go to med school and what have you. I applied and um, I, I, I pursued that route. But honestly, my heart really wasn't that wasn't the best fit for me. I loved being able to contribute to uh, healthcare. I, I loved being able to um, know the information, but I wanted to be able to um, to have some interaction with individuals and with physicians. Um, and so, in my studies, I was studying epidemiology and biostats. Um, I I came across a research position um, in grad school. And um, as a graduate research assistant, and um, I started working in pediatrics um, because of that connection. I applied for a position in Dallas um, in neurosurgery, neuro oncology, and um, I started I, I started there at Children's Medical Center Dallas. But I didn't really get involved into what is known as clinical research or human subjects research, um, which is really what this is geared towards. Um, I was doing more of the biostats academic kind of stuff and I, I had a passion for getting involved in human subjects research. And what that is, is, um, it, is it is taking the human component and taking a research question and trying to move it from the first step of whether or not it's either safe in humans, or, and then from there, whether or not it's safe and effective, uh, and then from safe and effective to um, whether or not we can make a generalizable statement um, about the effectiveness in a larger group, and then after that, we can market it. So, um, so I got involved in that in oncology research, and I did that for a few years. Um, and from there, went on to study with uh, solid organ transplant and uh, pediatric patients. Um, and from there, ended up helping out in um, the institution, serving in the capacity as a research education uh, coordinator for everybody. Very exciting. And you're the, you're the educator for your whole health system now in yes. clinical research. You're teaching and training people about clinical research every day. But you thought about being a doctor, but do you have a, you're not a doctor. You're, oh. what's your degree in? So, uh, so, <laughs> so epidemi epidemiology biostats. So I, my graduate degree is in um, allied health services research with the cert certification in those. Uh -huh. Bills. And that was back in 2001, 2002, before MPH and all of that. And so is that a master's degree? Is yes. that a master's degree? Yes. And then okay. undergraduate, 
Oh, I'm sorry. Undergraduate was uh, my bachelor's is in um, health education, music, <laughs> and um, and biology. Wow, great! Yeah. So you had this really cool background. You go working in the hospital. You got a master's degree, and now you're running all these education programs. And how big is the Texas health system that you work in? It's the Children's Health System of Texas? Children's Health System of Texas. So we have two large institutions, and we have approximately 54 satellite institutions. Um, those are community-based clinics. Um, at any given point, um, let's, let's put it like this. Um, our main campus in Dallas is a, we see over 5,000 patients at any given day. Um, we, we have over uh, 1,300 beds um, at our North Campus, which is in Plano. These are very large institutions, and we've just recently opened another one focusing mainly on orthopedic research. So, um, no, and you also run a group called Hot for Research, where you're training people in pediatric research. But you've been in this for a while. Why is research so hot right now? Why has it grown so much? What's happening? Well, it's grown because there's a need to improve patient care that only um, that need can only be met by having human subject trials, uh, clinical research trials. Um, whether answering questions um, from whether or not there's a better method to treating um, appendicitis patients um, with whether or not Tylenol versus another opioid drug works and which one is going to be more effective. Um, those types of questions um, only can be answered by having either a clinical research study that's and so because of that and to further the uh, the healthcare enterprise we have to have human subjects research studies and honestly there's a there's a human component where there's a limitation one person can only coordinate so many studies um, and that number for us is around about four or five and as we have more questions that are developing and more more need to answer and further uh, patient care we don't have enough people to, uh, to run these trials, not enough trained individuals to run these trials. Um, and that presents a wonderful opportunity. Yeah, it is. And the jobs are out there and it's a rewarding career. I don't know if you realize this, but right now, someone who's a clinical research coordinator running trials, the average salary with someone who's been doing it for a couple of years is $60,000 a year. Now, um, uh, Clinical Research Fast Track is headquartered in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I just heard in Arizona, the average salary of a CRA, this is a clinical research associate who monitors trials around the country, that average salary is $120,000 a year. That is really impressive what's the potential to, to earn. You're not only working in this field that's helping answer these questions to develop new treatments and medicines, but you can actually earn a nice living too. Um, that's, that's really impressive. Now, I don't know if you've seen this stat, but in the state of Texas, it's the second most number of open jobs in the country. And that, that's huge. Are you hiring right now where you are? I was just about to ask if I could put a plug in there. <laughs> yes, we are hiring. Um, we need, we are looking for clinical research coordinators to help us with our cardiology trials. There's, there's a position out there right now, team, <laughs> um, uh, where we are, that's one of the hot positions for us. Um, we have about five positions um, that are, here they are. We have in oncology, our cancer trials, we have at least two positions there. We have the other three are throughout. So, um, and that's just clinical research coordination. Um, the diversity coming in with, if you have a business background and you want to get into uh, clinical research, there's a need for clinical research financial analysts and, and quality specialists. And we're hiring for those as well. And when you're hiring, you are looking for people who have training and experience. Is that right? They, that's absolutely right. They have to. And if they don't have, if it's not something that we see or can discern from their resume, unfortunately, um, we, we skip to the next person. But that's, that's a requisite. 
Right, which is precisely why we developed this program because there were so many jobs out there. We have colleagues in the industry who are searching for people and there's great people out there, William. They have incredible backgrounds. You know, they might have the finance background you're looking for. They might have a medical background, a cardiology background. They could be working in healthcare, but they don't have the clinical research training and they weren't getting selected for the job. And what we've done is now we're training them in clinical research. We're introducing Introducing them to people like you but the interesting thing is with our program you're not the only instructor when they come to a, the program in Austin for example they're gonna have 14 different instructors just like you they're awesome. running big facilities they're they're educators they're coordinators they're CRAs and all of these locations are hiring right now it's really phenomenal what's happening in the industry so can we can we look under the hood a little like what are these coordinators actually doing what tell me tell me a little more it's a, it's a great exciting job it's rewarding what does a coordinator do so the clinical research coordinators at children's health system of texas they oversee every aspect of the trial they are delegated um, the role and responsibilities of consenting the research patients um, screening them first of all to make sure that they're eligible for the study so that means that they have to have uh they have to have a great attention to detail um, and be very personable because they're interacting with the patients there um, they are um escorting them throughout the hospital throughout their day they're maintaining contact uh, contact with them um, they are um for all practical purposes and intents if they're a nurse or if they're clinical they can administer study drug um, the investigational product. Uh, they follow them throughout the entirety of the patient, the participants' uh, participation on the study. Um, and they are the most trusted and relied upon individuals on the team. Um, for okay, the most and now they, and they're, working, they're working with doctors as well, true. There's doctors on the trial, the principal investigator, yes. correct? Yes, the physicians are the main are the PIs for the study, and they're the ones that actually um, they actually dub them basically able and proficient enough to go and perform these um, these roles. Um, they work hand in hand. Um, they're in constant contact with the PIs, um, so daily communications, daily emails. Um, I cannot stress enough the reliance upon the PIs have on a competent and uh, confident employee, um, making sure that the training is in place and once that's there, and they, they view them as a colleague. And so that's really important. It's really important uh, to stress because um, for the most part, you are their eyes and ears while they are uh, continuing their patient care. Uh, excellent, excellent. And and just so you know, this is what the growth of the industry is looking like right now. It's amazing to see the job growth. And we have a question that was asked by one of the um, participants in the webinar. It says, what if you have a background in human subjects committee work, such as IRB, would that be looked at as an experience? And the answer is, um, every, every aspect of clinical research is helpful. So if you have that IRB experience, that would be wonderful, but it's not always enough because that doesn't mean you can coordinate a trial. It means you have some background and that's why so many people have come to our program, William, because they realize they apply to positions, they apply, they apply, they apply, but they're not actually getting hired and they think there's something wrong with them. And it's not, there's nothing wrong with them. It's just, it can be difficult to apply for these jobs. Sometimes uh, you don't know exactly what they're looking for, but after a student goes through our training and they have this complete package and then they're introduced personally to the people are interviewing. And we have so many colleagues around the country, that is the extra advantage that gets them to the interview and then often gets them hired. And um, I showed that slide earlier Earlier, we have students working at over a hundred different sites around Texas and around the country, which is super exciting. Um, I also wanted to um, show you this slide as well, because there's just a recent study that came out in this article is in the New York Times that what we're doing, you said we're answering questions, these research questions. Well, sometimes the question is, 
Is there a way to help these patients who needed open heart surgery without open heart surgery? And the answer was yes. They found a new treatment. Did you see this one, William? This no, is I a, this is a, This is a new treatment where they're using, they're replacing an aortic valve with a minimally invasive procedure instead of open heart surgery. And think about if you have a loved one or a family member who had to go through us, open heart surgery is so serious. Now instead, it's a much less invasive procedure and it's helping so many more people. And these are the kinds of, of studies that we're working on to really help a lot of people. But why don't you tell us about one of your favorite studies or two that you've worked on? Sure. Um, the first one that I want to mention is actually the first, um, I took a few notes too about it because it's really exciting. It's the CAR-T, C-A-R-T uh, protocol. Um, it's, it's a study that was funded by Novartis. And in 2017, we were successful. Um, well, let me just start over. The CAR-T study is awesome in the fact that it is mainly geared towards individuals, little kids and teenagers that um, were diagnosed with um, ALL, leukemia. Um, ideally, in the early 2000s or so, um, the cure rate was 85 to 90 percent for individuals that were undergoing treatment for leukemia. But we still weren't satisfied. I mean, we want 100% cure rate. That's the whole thing for research. We want the best. Um, so, and for those 10 to 15% that did not respond well to the regular, the regular treatments or what have you, um, unfortunately for them, it was a death sentence prior to this study. Um, in 2017, we obtained our um, FDA approval for it being one of the first... Um, the first gene therapies uh, approved by the FDA to treat these non-refractory um, leukemia kiddos. Um, and now they are responding, we, I mean, they're responding so well that they're at 83% uh, five-year survival rate. Well, that's what we're projecting, but 83% cure rate thus far. Um, so, so just to put it in simple terms, unfortunately, these children before this treatment were dying, right? Yes, they were. And now... Now 83% are living for five years. Um, yes. that's, that's incredible. I mean, saving lives. Yes, and, and the, it's, it's so exciting because being a research coordinator, you are there, you are recruiting these participants. You are seeing how they went from not, not, that, not to get your uh, hopes all up, but this is an opportunity to make a difference. If not necessarily for that participant right then and there at that point, particularly for the future and you're right there with them so so uh, we were we were we were over the moon at the fact that our site was one of 21 in the world that was selected for this and our kiddos they're responding well to it and they're living they are living and so car t uh, therapy that's that's one of the best ones right there I, I wake up in the middle of the night just ecstatic about that uh -huh. um, Oh my God, that's a, that's a beautiful story. We have a lot of people asking questions, William. So I wanted to take some of these questions, see if I could speak to them, and I'll, I'll bring you in as well. Um, the first question is about our program. What kind of support do we offer to our students? And really the focus of our five-week program. Our program is completed in five weeks. Four of the five weeks you can put complete right in your hometown. There's two weeks of internship at a clinical trial site. There's some online training, but then there's eight days of boot camp training. The next one is coming up in Austin, Texas at the end of April, starting April 28th. We're going to be in Austin for eight days, and then you can go back home to wherever you live to do your internship at a clinical trial site, as well as complete your online training. And then, yes, we do support you with your resume. We introduce you to our connections, not just the 14 people, the 14 instructors who are industry experts. William is just one of them, but we have experts all over the industry working at hospitals in clinical research, working as supervisors, working as coordinators, working as CRAs. And they are your networking connections to the industry. And I know William on many occasions has met with our students who don't uh, who took our class in Atlanta or Scottsdale and they came back to Dallas meeting with William to talk about their career and he can point them in the right direction which is an amazing connection um, and now William you might be meeting some more people just from this 
Great job. Uh, yeah, so we do work with uh, recruiting firms. We know our executives, our instructors to help our students get in the field. A lot of people are asking about experience. So someone has data management experience, but that, that might not be enough. Do they need to take extra training? William? Definitely, yes. Um, the thing that sets the thing that sets um, clinical research fast track apart from the individuals that may have the experience but um, may have the uh, the skill set but lack the experience is that you actually get that hands on experience. Um, it's it's so valuable when we're doing the interviews and um, when I sit in on the interviews. One of the main things that I look for, as well as all of our uh, leaders we look for on their resume, what have they done? What exposure have they had? Um, because it's a, good, um, it's a good indicator for us as to whether or not they'll be successful in our position. Um, we know for a fact that individuals that, um, we know for a fact that individuals that come and sit with, uh, that come to us, and we have tried before in the past, but because they didn't have the experience, experience has taught us that we cannot afford them the opportunity mm -hmm. because it is such a huge investment on the institution's part or the organization's part to um, take a chance on someone when they have not fully been exposed to human subjects research. And that's why I really, in, I really appreciate clinical research fast track. I'm not just saying this guys, because um, without it, I've seen so many talented individuals, but they, they don't know what clinical research really and truthfully is. There are no classes at a med school that will really get you prepared for what you're about to venture, uh, venture forth in, like clinical research fast track. I say that knowing full well that I collaborate with UT Southwestern Medical School and I know what their curriculum is, as well as the one in Galveston and pretty much I've done my homework. Um, this does not exist. You yeah. will not have this opportunity. And, and it's interesting you say that most jobs when you look in clinical research, they say you need between one and three years of experience for any particular role. But the hiring managers, the supervisors who interview our students, yeah. They're hiring our students, even though they just have five weeks of training, because they actually know more than someone who's been in the field often for a year or two, because of the comprehensive nature of the class, the foundation, plus the internship. So it's a really nice, well-rounded program. Now, nothing can substitute for being in the field for five or six years, but this is enough to get you in the door. So... Um, we have a few questions here of people who are saying, how can, I, um, how can I get in the field? I am a pharmacist. How can I get into clinical research? We do have clinical research pharmacists, mm -hmm. but as a pharmacist, we've got many pharmacists who take our course and then with their pharmacy background and the clinical research training, they're able to easily move into a clinical research pharmacy role. Mm -hmm. The same thing is for all of you in um, foreign medical graduates. We have had so many foreign medical graduates take our class. You have a beautiful background in medicine, extremely talented and a proven knowledge. But unfortunately, it's very hard for a foreign medical graduate to get board certified in the United States. But with our training, you can easily move into clinical research. And now we have foreign medical graduates working as CRAs, working as CRCs. They're working at places like Baylor, Scott and White. We even have one at UT Southwestern. And, um, there and not just in texas around the country so it's a really great opportunity for those of you who are foreign medical graduates this is a great career for you um oh my gosh ken has a couple of people are saying what's the cost of the program um william i don't know even know if if you if you know the details um when you go back to one of those master's programs in clinical research which used to be the the traditional way to get into the field and there's some great master's programs, Drexel University, George Washington University. Those programs cost $40,000 per year. So it's $80,000 over two years. And then those students start looking for a job. So it's two years of training and a long time and $80,000. Our program costs $9,750 and it's a condensed intensive training. So it can be completed in a much shorter amount of time. So our students aren't training for two years, they're actually working. 
and gaining experience over those years. And they're getting that support to get in the industry. Um, oh my gosh, so many questions here. Um, um, why don't you talk about what it means? People sometimes think that you, do you work from home, do you work at a facility? Where do you work and what is, what is the workday like? Well, it depends. If you're going to be a, a clinical research coordinator, CRC, you typically are housed at an institution, um, a, a hospital, um, maybe um, a clinical research organization, and you are there and you don't travel. Um, you can work from home in those instances, of course, um, because you are, you are stationary with their organization. Um, that's the typical clinical research coordinator role. The CRA, however, is more of a traveling clinical research associate uh, traveling role. Um, and so you will be assigned, would be assigned by um, either the study sponsor, but typically the clinical research organization. Um, you'd be assigned studies and um, have sites that participate in your study, which would require you to travel uh, periodically on a plan to monitor those sites. So um, what that looks like is when they have a patient to enroll, the first patient enrolled, you fly out there to make sure that they did that appropriately. Um, and then you fly back home or, or you fly out where another site may be closing out their study. And so you'd fly out there to make sure that they close it out appropriately and then you fly back home. So um, it, it's, it's a wonderful opportunity either way, either stationary with clinical research coordinator or traveling with CRA. Yeah, and, and uh, you, you know, we're almost out of time. So I just want to, to thank you again, William. This has been, it's been so much fun. It goes so fast, I know, but people have places to go. They have a lot to do. We have a lot, we had a lot of questions. So I want to ask, is there a final exam? There is a final <laughs> exam. Yes, we do assess our students. Um, and we want to make sure you really understand the material and we um, can help you uh, learn the material really well, we'll support you. And there's a lot of positions. There's CRCs, coordinators, there's clinical research associates, there's data managers, there's regulatory specialists, there's um, protocol develop developers, there's clinical scientists, there's roles in the pharmaceutical sponsors of the trials, at the CROs, the contract research organizations that are running the trials, at the hospitals and research sites and academic institutions. That's why there's so many jobs. Um, and people are asking more and more about our class, but I want every, oh, I just wanted to leave with this. If you're interested in our Texas program, we do have a special scholarship offer for um, anyone who applies to our program and is accepted for that April 28th class in Austin. If you talk to us and you mention Webinar 500, there's a $500 scholarship, uh, which is a, basically a reduction in your tuition by that amount. Um, and someone else asked, how do you pay for the course? Well, most people are getting financing, student loans, just like they're going to other programs around the country. But um, it's a wonderful field. William, I know you love it. You're passionate about it. Absolutely. Uh, I am too. <laughs> And I just want to thank you, William, for taking this time out of your evening to share your experience in clinical research and about what you're doing in Texas. And it's such an exciting field. And I'm thinking about those lives that you are saving, the children you told us about. And uh, it must feel great to be a part of this, uh, to be a part of clinical research. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me, David. And thank you all for, for being a part. This is awesome. Yeah, it's been great. So if you need information, please give us a call uh, during business hours or email us, contact at clinicalresearchfasttrack.com. We're happy to answer more questions. Sorry we're out of time. But again, thank you, William, for participating. And thanks to all of you for coming and joining our webinar uh, today. And clinical research really is a hot field. And we look forward to sharing more information with all of you.